you know, thinking about your systems and the systems that you have in place for using resources and making connections between phases of your lesson is going to be really important. It's going to be as important as any technological skill that you can get because the system and the way that you set the lesson up is going to be what determines uh, the overarching determining factor whether the lesson succeeds or fails. Even if you've set up a billion digital resources, if the student doesn't want to find it, if the student doesn't get that desire to, to go seek it out, it's not going to matter what you have or where you have it. So you really want to rethink the instructional loop. You know, you as a teacher aren't going to be there to push the students forward. You're not there standing over their shoulders. So you have to start thinking of why will they move forward? Why would they move from step one to step two in this task if you're not there to stand and, you know, push them and make them do it? Because they want to learn is not an answer for, for all circumstances. And we know that, you know, that not all students feel that intrinsic need to, you know, move on to the next step and learn. So we need to present that reason. You need to design that reason. The why is more important than ever uh, without the teacher standing over your shoulder. So you want to think about, you know, why. What is going to push the student to the next step at every stage of your lesson? You really have to think of all those stages. Um, when they don't know how to complete a step in your phase there, uh, there's a new choice every time, which is to seek out a resource or give up. So there's so many choices of give up when you're not standing over their shoulder and you want to make sure that the uh, that, that path is smaller and murkier into the side and the big giant wide one in front of them is the easy resource that you know is lined up right in front of them. So you want a clear and concise path towards your digital resource you know box or toolbox. So organize your digital resources just as you would a physical desk or a table in your room, you know. Everything from the folder to the file name can be important and eliminating one less possible roadblock from a student moving from one step to the next in your instructional chain. You know, think about it. When you gave a handout, um, at the top of the handout, it wouldn't say ZZXF41IMG.3.JPEG. You know, like you usually in your resources probably have them clearly labeled and you want your files to be the same way. When a student downloads a file, you know, maybe you want it to say earth science reference tables and charts dot PDF, you know, something really specific to the task so that even if they, so that they don't have to go and re-download it again, because if they have a downloads folder full of ZZXY dot JPEGs, they're going to look at that and they'll get overwhelmed and they'll just go, well, I guess maybe I'll go look for it and download it again. And in that process, you're going to start to fall, you know, lose them as they fall off. So everything, you know, wants to be really, really clearly labeled and, and you want to have your systems in place. OK, so present that initial desire or need really clearly for the entire lesson and make sure that each step as you go through the lesson can be traced or rooted back to that desire. So you anticipate where the stumbling block might be, and you kind of mock up what a student would have to do to move past it. So think of every step in your chain as they're going through to complete these different phases and put yourself in that place and go, okay, so I'm here. Let me say I'm here, but I don't remember the quadratic formula. Um, what do I do from here? You want to make sure that you've got that loop back and it's easy for them to figure out where it is and, and you know, and that they've got that desire, you know, that need to, to do it, to finish the task so that everything is rooted in that first piece. Um, you know, designing lessons in this fashion isn't easy and it isn't quick. Don't let anybody sell you differently. You know, you're trading off time later for time now, you know, building a lot in now so that later on they can do this you know, without you standing over their shoulder, but organizing your systems for that whole loop of consumption, feedback, and then delivery to the teacher is going to be key. And you want to just make sure that your systems are organized before you start delivering content to the students, because if the systems aren't organized and the systems aren't easy to understand, then it chips away, you know, like a sculptor, it chips away at that desire to, they start to forget why they're doing the task you know you again at every stage there's this new option of leave and go play video games or leave and go use my phone or talk to my friends whenever you're dealing with teaching an online uh, course so it's you know those desires and those things weren't there before so you want to make sure that the path is really really wide really really clear and having murky systems can really mess with that so we want to get those systems in place before we start